This painting comes from uh, the late 80s, and the reason uh, I want to talk about it a little bit is because it's a very open painting that allows you to see several periods in Jean's work. If we start with the background, it recalls his stain paintings, and even now, all of his paintings start with stain. They all start with space. They all start uh, with a wash. Sometimes the wash is thick, but often it could be a painting in and of itself. So if you look, you see this sort of splotching, you see a rhythm, you see a movement. It's not a hugely dramatic or explosive rhythm, but there is a stain painting that lies as the basis. He could have stopped there. He could have done just a small four by four foot stain painting, although that style of painting actually lends itself to much more, uh, much larger canvases. It lends itself to a much uh, more dramatic and gestural style. Nevertheless, this is a piece of a stain painting. It is a stain painting at the background. Now, what you have is this attempt to make explicit what was implicit in the stain painting. In the stain painting, you have gestures, you have surges, you have explosions. Uh, but you, to a certain degree, have to read into them, you have to interpret into them, you have to understand them, uh, you have to complete them in yourself. Some of his best stain paintings do complete that gesture in some way that's hard to understand how, uh, with uh, such a simple uh, and limited range of painterly techniques, which was gesture, sponge, and brush, that you could get such comp complex forms arising. In this case, the complex forms arise because the painting is worked into. So you have the stained background, and then he begins to explain what is there and what he wants to draw your attention to, he begins to draw out of that space the conclusion. And what's interesting here is that he uses techniques that you see in different periods. Here you have the liner brush technique, and as I've explained in other videos, the liner brush was the conclusion of a process of returning to the muse, only returning to the muse uh, on his terms rather than on her terms. The liner brush is also gestural, but instead of being gestural in the way Pollock was gestural and gestural on the floor and gestural as a dance, uh, it's gestural uh, the way a jeweler might be gestural, or it's gestural the way a miniature painter might be gestural. The, the energy is in the painting, but the energy is more minute. And with the liner brush paintings here, you have these minute explosions of energy. Uh, in the larger stain paintings, the explosions of energy are not minute, they are huge, they are gestural, they are shamanic, and they are an incantation in which the, the painter is possessed and paints. Here the painter is more collected, the painter is more deliberate, the painter is channeling energy, but the painter is doing it over a much longer period of time in a much more minute way, and over time, a momentum builds up. A momentum builds up because no gesture is made without a counter gesture. So it's an accumulation of gestures, a counter gesture, uh, the energy against the energy moving forward, which you see in other abstract paintings, for example, Mondrian, on a similar scale, very different, pure and ocean. Uh, paintings also have line, counter line, and an accumulation uh, that accretes in that way. So he uses color, he uses uh, the, these arcs in different colors, and they accumulate, they accumulate, they accumulate, and then they go, they detonate, they go into an explosion of color. But what's nice about this one is, it, even while he does that, instead of covering over the background and turning the painting into something where you cannot see its origin, here the origins are left through the accumulation of liner brush paintings. You get the explosion, but in the background you can see what space the explosion came out of. 
Here you have uh, more of an accumulation, a thicker accumulation to the right of the liner brush going into an angel-like figure standing on the right. Uh, and uh, you, you get an example of when the liner brush completely makes the background more opaque. So that's a very nice body here uh, in contrast to the liner brush here which remains more transparent. But what makes this painting really even more interesting than that, than the use of liner brush preserving the background, because some of the liner brush paintings had that, is the fact that you have a third feature in his painting, which evolved in the, in the mid to late 80s, and that is much more gestural, free use of color. Uh, so to combine this sort of minute uh, 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 work of the jeweler with this broader, more aggressive brushwork, uh, that these transitions are very interesting. So you've really got three very different types of painting here. You've got the stained in the background, you've got these liner brush accumulations, and then you have not a staining, but a type of painting that's more similar to the gestures that you had in staining, much broader brushwork, more aggressive brushwork, uh, and a, a transition here. Uh, a transitional phase between these two figures, and a transition that also has its roots in the gestures, in the more transparent wash-like gestures that create the background. So, an explosion, a figure, and a making more explicit of movement that was implicit in the wash here, but also by making it more explicit, by using thicker paint, by using broader gestures, you also make an image more vivid, more apparent, and easier to perceive.